What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, and welcome to another episode of Crypto Mining Pool Server. This is going to be episode numero tres, aka three, and we're going to be going over our cluster setup and as well as our remote management software that we're using, so stick around. Since I'll be talking about all of this over here and you guys will be seeing it over here, let's just go ahead and move over right now. Alrighty, so first of all, we are going to be using ConnectWise's Screen Connect, which you can actually use for up to three machines for free. We only have one here that we really need to get into for control, which is going to be the SOAT CMC, AKA Central Management Console. If you don't know what SOAT stands for, shame on you but without further ado all we're gonna have to do is come in here log in and click join you can add various machines by downloading the agent and installing it on those machines for management later this is a little bit more reliable and just a secondary option to something like team viewer so we can also have a little bit more functionality here we can go over this in a later video if you guys are interested in more details on Screen Connect and how to use it, please let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, we're gonna click join. I already pre-configured all of that and we hop into our CMC. So right off the bat, you'll kind of notice that I already have Hyper-V Manager pulled up, the Failover Cluster Manager, and Starwind Management Console. Of course, before you can really get into any of that, you're going to have to configure your host. This is a remote desktop uh, of the essentially the Hyper-V Core of 2016. So you essentially install this on the host. Like I said, we installed it on the 100 gigabyte Dell solid state drives. And then you just assign it an IP. You can do that simply by coming into here. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Coming in and you'll have this uh, prompt up and you can see here that eight is network settings. So you just click eight, go in and then select the NIC that you want to configure and then set its IP address. For management, we have the address set to 10.10.0.41. Just to give you an idea, the 41 just denotes the host. I put all of my hosts in the 40 range and then we just go from one, two, three, so on, so on. Of course, in this case, we just have one and two. This also makes it easy to set up my iSCSI. As you can see here, our first iSCSI is just going to be the 10.253.253.41. The 41 denotes that it's, you know, our host VMH01. And the 253.253 denotes the NIC. So this is on NIC3 physically. Now, of course, it's there was something that happened a little wonky here as far as the way it indexed it, but we can correct that later. Anyways, after that, we also have the Microsoft Failover Cluster Virtual Adapter, which is just a local host, and that's how you surface the local storage back to the host. And so once you set all of that up, you can come in and type in iSCSI ICPL, and that'll bring up your iSCSI initiator properties. And you essentially type in the target up here. You want to target the other host. So in this case, for example, I would do the 10.10.0.42 if I was going over the LAN, but of course, since we have these direct connected, duh, we would go 10.253.253. Now, of course, I say duh, I'm just being more explicit. You could quick connect over the other one. It should sense uh, other iSCSI paths, et cetera, through that. So what we do here is 253.253 to denote that we want to connect to NIC3 on the other host. And then the other host is in the 40 range and two, like I stated before, so 42. We click quick connect and they'll populate all of these sessions down here. You can see here if we go into uh, properties, I'll just click NCS here. You'll see that we have this connected to the 4.2. So our source portal is the 4.1 and our target is the 4.2. 
and then that is going to be used essentially to sync our local storage. So let me move this out of the way so we can minimize that. And essentially we'll be using a Starwind management console. I, if you guys are interested in from ground up building this out, let me know again in the comment section below. There are some very kind of, in my opinion, weak uh, how to's on this for example they're also outdated because before they said that we needed to have a quorum and a witness now we discovered after using it that we, we only need the witness essentially but you'll come in here and you will add the servers by ip and then you will go ahead and add all of the iSCSI connections here it should generate them and you can also use these to connect via the iSCSI initiator if you prefer and it kind of handles it all from there. So once you get all of this configured with your Starwind management console, we come in here and add both of the nodes. It's pretty simple. You can just enter the server names. So in this case, it was SOT-VMH02 and 01. You just click OK. Of course, right now it's already joined to the cluster, so we can't join it. Once that's done, we can surface the disk, add it in, and as you see here, we have the clustered shared volume and the witness, and uh, this was, I believe, the uh, quorum, but yeah, so we don't need that anymore. Anyways, as you can see here, we can go ahead and click properties and see where it stores it. So the image is gonna be on cluster storage volume one. So that's where we will want to go ahead and create all of our VMs in. So if we click over here to roles, uh, we can come down here and do a new virtual machine. Uh, we can select which host we want it to be on. Obviously in this kind of set up it, it's clustered so we aren't going to really care too much unless we start over extending our resources which hopefully we will not do that because then we can't fail over but for example we would just do test uh, and then we could store it in a different location by default it's already storing it in the cluster storage Click next, uh, Gen 2 for 64-bit, Gen 1 if you're going for older hardware and need more compatibility or if you're having issues, just depending on uh, what what in, in specifically you're trying to build. Uh, we can assign the memory and use dynamic memory if we wish, but of course that's just a, going to be in certain circumstances. I, I prefer just to always have use the same amount. Uh, in this case, that's one gig. Then we can configure our networking, which will be our virtual switch. You can configure that in the Hyper-V manager by coming in here and clicking the virtual switch manager and you just add a new external. In this case, if we wanna get out to the internet and you just click create and then you can select the external. So you see here that we have the different ethernets. This is where you wanna start uh, denoting like what you have connected etc directly between the hosts so on and so forth but that's just to give you an idea of where that comes from I'm just trying to do a quick overview so this isn't a full like Hyper-V deal here and then as you can see here it'll create it on there we can specify how much storage we want to use uh, click next we can here now go ahead and browse our uh, ISOs and select if we want Ubuntu typically is what we're doing currently of course because we're doing mining pools and then of course we still do have a Windows Server 2016 ISO here for this CMC that you are currently using and yes it is a a virtual CMC which is not advised but you can do it especially in this case because once it creates once you've used the manager on the CMC and it's created the failover, you no longer really have to worry about this unless you need to reconfigure. Then of course you need to have the CMC. Now it's funny, we did recreate this. So it kind of, uh, it blew out our CMC, but when we added it back and started up Starwind and added the host back, it picked up the configuration uh, from the previous disks that were already created. Now. What happens here is that if one of the hosts went down or if I rebooted 
one of the hosts and you can see the owner nodes here, it would fail over to the other host essentially. The other thing that this allows us to do is live migrate. So if we're planning, and this is hopefully how most of it will go, if we're planning maintenance on one of the physical servers and we need to do something there, let's say we're going to be like uh, adding more memory, for example, right? And we need to add four more sticks of RAM or upgrade the sticks from four gig to eight gig. As we grow and more pools are created, we might need to move these to another host, let it run over there. And you guys are still mining while we perform the maintenance on the secondary host and then move it back and then do it on the other host. And to do this, we can just uh, right click and we can essentially come down here to move and do a live migration and we can select the node for example and here we would say okay we want to move our Zcash server and keep it running over to host 2 and click OK and you'll see this live migration going. This is amazing. It is so fast and part of the reason it's so much faster is because of that local storage being connected through a, essentially a loopback IP as opposed to being over the gig. Of course, we do have a Cisco 2960S that I sent out there with it and all of this is on its own switch there. So that is definitely helpful as well as far as syncing. So now we can say, okay, well, we're done with the work. We're coming, gonna come back in here and migrate it back. I did say best node. It should move it back to the owner node in this case because that would be the best node as long as it's up and running. And yes, like you see here, it moved back to its owner, which is host one, and we are good to go. Now we have tested just powering off the other host, etc. I don't want to do that here for a live demonstration because we are currently building out uh, some of the Zcash pool. I'm trying to see where he has it pulled up here. Yeah, so here's our remote console. We're currently building out the SOAT-Zcash pool over on here. Once it goes live, you guys will be the first to know. It'll be at zcash.sonofattack.com. And that'll be the first one we set up. Then we have Bitcoin Z to do. We're gonna put it on its own subdomain at bitcoinz.sonofattack.com. And we should be golden there. If you guys have any questions, like I said, I just wanted to do a quick overview. Or if there's specific things you think that you would like to know about any of this setup, let me know and maybe we can go into a more detailed configuration guide of just virtualization with Hyper-V installation. I do have this fantastic X399 and a 1950X on the way. And with Windows 10 Pro, Hyper-V is built in. Now, of course, we can't get into the crazy cluster setup, but we could do a basic Hyper-V tutorial on that and then maybe move into going into this more complicated setup at a later date. I will leave a link for Starwind in the description below as well as a link to their YouTube for initial configuration. This product is amazing and, and you saw how fast that live migration is. It's, it's really impressive. So definitely go check that out. We aren't sponsored or anything by them. Uh, this is just what we decided to go with and we're very happy so far. That's going to pretty much wrap up the mining pool server vlog number three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am really excited about it. A lot of cool stuff is going down here. I love that we have a super fast gigabit connection out there and all of you guys will be served very well from the central United States. Thanks for watching and as always, I will see you next Tuesday.